Now that we have clarified a few things about sums, we can turn to the kind of problem we want to look at in the second part of the course, and namely the problem of finding the area of a region in the plane. So what kind of areas do we know how to find at this point? Well, the area of a rectangle is something that uh, you know well and you're used to calculating. So if you have the two dimensions of a rectangle, the area of the inside of the rectangle is simply the product of the two dimensions. On the other hand, you know how to calculate the area of a triangle. If it has base B and height H, the area is the uh, product of the base with the height divided by 2. The reason is because if the triangle has base B and height H, we can put it inside a rectangle that has B and H as its dimension, and um, in that rectangle we can in fact inscribe twice the area of the triangle. Okay, so these are simple cases. The case of the triangle can be used to find the area enclosed by a closed polygonal line. So for instance, if we have something like that, we can decompose this area into a bunch of triangles. And if we have enough information on each one of these triangles, we can sum up the areas to get the area enclosed by the polygonal line. So this is about the extent of what we really know how to calculate in terms of areas in the plane. Another particular case um, would be just the area of a disk uh, of radius r, which is pi r square. But if we look at a general area like that, at this point we are at a loss, and this is what we would like to be able to do. So, between the general case and the simple case of a rectangle, we're going to focus first um, on an intermediate case where I keep three sides of the rectangle and I change one side to get something like that. So I still have three sides that are um, segments of straight lines and one side that um, is a more general curve. So this is a good setting for us because now I can look at this kind of picture as the area that is under the graph of a function f of x. Right, the side that is now a curve I can be interpreted as the graph of a function and this is over a closed interval in this case AB. So this type of area where f is a function that is a positive function over the interval AB that I will usually assume to be continuous. When I look at the area under the graph this corresponds to when I say an area under the graph of a function over an interval this is the kind of area I'm talking about. So let's look at an example. Let's say we want to find the area under the graph of the function uh, y equal x squared over the closed interval from 0 to 1. So this is the area we're interested in and we want to find a way to calculate this area. So at this point we don't already have a lot of tools um, as I mentioned before, the only thing we really know how to calculate is the area of a rectangle. So we can use that to try to estimate this area, at least find some lower bound and upper bound. One way to find a lower bound is to observe that this rectangle uh, is inscribed in the area that I'm looking for, and therefore the area of this rectangle is certainly going to be smaller than the area I'm looking for. In this case, this is a rectangle that has one side along the x-axis, which is of length one half, and the other side, the height, is one fourth, because you see that uh, the height is given by the value of the function x squared at one half, and one half squared is one fourth. So this area is one half times one fourth, so one eighth. So what I can say is that the area is at least one eighth. Well, that's not great, but I can also find an um, upper bound. Uh, by looking at these two rectangles and I can individually calculate the areas of each and add them up and I will get something that is certainly bigger than the red area. The first rectangle 
that is uh, sitting over the interval 0, 1 half, as again area 1 eighth, because in fact it is a copy of the rectangle we had inside that is just translated to the left by a length 1 half. The also rectangle has one length, one side that is of length 1 half, and the other side that is of length 1. And therefore, uh, it has area 1 half. So 1 eighth plus 1 half is 5 eighths. So what I have found so far is that the area I'm looking for must be greater than 1 eighth and less than 5 eighths. Well, that's not a great estimate, but this is a start. And if I want to do better, one way I can try to improve those estimates is to use more rectangles. So for instance, I can divide the interval uh, 0, 1 in 4 instead of 2. And so I have four rectangles that all have one of their lengths, the one along the x-axis um, of length 1 fourth, because I have divided the interval 0, 1 in 4 equal parts. And then the uh, second dimension of these rectangles changes for each one of these three. So in the first rectangle over 0, 1 fourth, the height is 0, so I have area 0. The second rectangle, the height is the value of the function at 1 fourth, in other words, 1 fourth squared. The second, I'm sorry, the third rectangle that sits over the part of the interval from 1 half to 3, to 3 fourths, has height 1 half squared, so 1 fourth, and the last one has height 3 fourths squared. So, each one of these has one of its side that is 1 fourth, and then the first one is flat, the second one has height 1 fourth squared, third one height 1 half squared, and then last one height 3 fourths squared. So this gives me an estimate from below for the area. And this sums up to 7 over 32. Similarly, I can proceed like in the case of two rectangles, um, when I split the interval in two. Now I can look at um, these four rectangles and the sum of their areas is going to give me an estimate from above for the red area. Again, each one of these four rectangles has one of its side that has length 1 fourth. The first one has height 1 4 squared, the second one 1 half squared, the third one 3 4 squared, and the last one 1 squared. And this sums up to 15 over 32. Okay, so we get a better estimate from below and from above. And you probably see where it's going now. We're going to keep increase the number of rectangles we use from above and from below. And uh, get an upper bound and a lower bound that whose quality is uh, improving as we increase the number of rectangles used. I'm going to turn to a picture that gives you the idea of this process. Of course, the picture is for x squared over the interval 0, 2 instead of 0, 1. It's just for the sake of the picture. But the principle is this. We start with uh, just two rectangles, and then we increase this number of rectangles, and you see that the area, the total area, sum of the areas of the green rectangles, is getting closer and closer to the area that we want to estimate. 